And now, Thriller Thursdays on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. Chapter 27 Trixie pushed the door of Spencer's place open and breezed in like she owned the joint. I followed behind, bouncing the door off my shoulder as my hands were full. In the right, I held the 45, always reliable. In the left, I gripped the 38 I had taken from the bread box this morning. It had spent the interval in my pocket and thought it might as well get in on the fun. I couldn't actually fire both at the same time with any degree of accuracy, but I looked damn good holding both of them. And since it was profoundly not my intent to shoot anyone just now, looks were what mattered. Anyone who had ever seen a western or read an adventure book would know I was not one they wanted to play with. Hap Spencer jumped when he saw us, but I thrust the 38 towards him and he froze right enough. The rest of the barflies were all to my right, and they seemed plenty impressed with the 45. Hands on the bar, I said, do it. They did it. They didn't like it or understand it, but they did it. Where I can see them, Mr. Spencer, I said, please. Please and everything, Hap Spencer snorted. I really hoped he didn't go for the gun. I'd feel like an idiot shooting this guy. He kept his hands above the bar. I lowered my gun arm. Mr. Spencer, Trixie said, all business, you almost certainly do not realize this, but my associate, Mr. Justice, and myself are in the middle of an uncomfortable situation just now. Is that a fact, Hap Spencer said, quite lost. We are, as you may have gathered, private detectives, Trixie said. Hap nodded slowly, as if reluctant to agree to anything. Without belaboring the events of the last 72 hours too much, Trixie said with something like a sigh, it is fair to say that we have been put into a situation by a pair of clients, one of whom was certainly more aware of the full implications than the other. I digress. What was supposed to have been variations on a simple divorce job now has us thrust right into the middle of the Riverton Expressway with a strong probability of being run over by the Rossetti crime family. This got Hap's attention at last. Rossetti's tried to buy you out? Trixie asked. He tried to burn me out last night, Hap said. I got a piece of one of them. Trixie nodded. He's running out of time, she said. You were right. Rossetti is the one that bought up Riverton and let it rot. He did it because he knew there was a chance that Long Branch would run right through here and knew that he could manipulate events to ensure that it did. Every cent his holding companies get from the government for these buildings will be as thoroughly laundered as it could be. Hap Spencer sighed like a balloon deflating a little. Hearing someone else say it like it was a fact seemed to be a relief to him. So why does he need my place so bad? He doesn't, Trixie said, aside from the fact that he's a stubborn man with a tendency to take whatever he wants. He offered me peanuts, Spencer said in a low voice. If he had offered me even a half fair price for a run-down place in a half-deserted neighborhood, I might have taken it. But he would rather insult me. And when I found out who was in back of it, I swore he'd never get my place. He poisoned Riverton, killed it slow, and did it for nothing. But he doesn't get my place. That's fair, Trixie said. We would like to represent your interests in the matter. Now Hap Spencer was really confused. You how much, he said. Trixie continued. Neither Mr. Justice nor myself are currently employed by the clients who brought us into this matter, she said. And in all fairness, that is at least partly because both of them are dead, though in our defense that only happened after they had terminated our employment. Naturally, Hap said, his leathery face a mask of wonder. We have, through the pursuit of our previous client's interests, unwittingly been brought into conflict with the Rossetti family, Trixie said. A confrontation seems at this point inevitable, and we would like it to be in the name of something other than simple survival. Although we are not opposed to that either. Of course, Hap said. There are two common threads that link everyone whom we have met in the course of this investigation, Trixie said. Number one, we despise almost all of them, present company accepted. We like you. I'm so glad, said Hap, still baffled by it all. And number two, most of them are dead. Again, present company accepted, Trixie smiled. I should add that we have, thus far, killed very few of them, although I expect that will have to change, and soon. In any event, we find ourselves in need of a client. The need is more a moral one than a financial one, though naturally that does exist as well. For our combined services, we are prepared to offer you a rate of $35 a day, and on this occasion, we will forgo the expenses. Hap looked from her to me and back again. Do you two drum up a lot of business this way? Steady stream, I said. I should be clear, Mr. Spencer, she said, ignoring the levity. Mr. Justice and I do not feel it is very likely that anything we do will stop the final vote on running the expressway through Riverton. This is just too big and too many people will have a piece of it. But if we are able to do so, we will stop Rossetti's efforts to gain control of your place before the expropriations begin. 
you will get a fair price for your place and maybe a little more. Hap sighed, and a lot of him seemed to leave his body with it. He looked old for the first time. They killed Riverton a long time ago, he said. The place I knew is long gone, and all the people too. My pension is in this bar. I have to get something. Yes, sir, Trixie said. Thirty-five, you said? Hap Spencer asked. Yes, sir, Trixie nodded, opening her handbag and producing a receipt book. Normally, we would ask you for three days in advance at the outset of a job, but as it seems fairly unlikely that we will live longer than 24 hours, we were prepared to leave it at 35. You two have kind of a funny way about you, you know that? He asked. Yes, sir, Trixie said. We know. It's been working so far. Spencer seemed intrigued. How can you tell? He asked. Trixie smiled. We're the only ones not dead, she said. Hap Spencer opened the cash register and took out two tens and three fives, which he handed to the girl detective. She sat at the bar and wrote him out a receipt, nice and official. Then they shook hands. Hap looked at me and I nodded. I was still holding a lot of guns. Thirty seconds later, we were back out in the chill of the night. Okay, she said, handing me a ten and a five, which did not escape notice. Now what? Now we make a deal, I said grimly. This is Thursday Thrillers, audio with action on the Mutual Audio Network. Join us tomorrow on Mutual with Friday Follies, the end of the week collection of comedy cut-ups. You can subscribe to the full Mutual Audio Network feed for every day of audio drama that fits your fancy. Or find the Friday Follies feed in your favorite podcast players. Now that's a lot of effus. The Mutual Audio Network. Listening and imagining together.